welcome again each one of you as we have gathered together with one accord. We welcome those who have joined us for the live stream. Of course, also your fellowship means very much to us. We're in the Gospel of John. This is the 13th exposition of this book. We're going to be in verses 32 through 34 of the first chapter. This text speaks of John the Baptist bearing record. Bearing record. John, uh, the Apostle John, begins this, his revelation about John by saying, and this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests to Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? This is the record. Mm -hmm. Moses once said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Jesus spoke of the record that he personally gave. It said of some people that saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. The people, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised it, bear record. Yeah. <laughs> bear record. Yeah. John said of his own experience of seeing Jesus die on the cross. Mm -hmm. He that saw it bear record. Mm -hmm. And his record is true. Amen. Now testifying of the misplaced zeal of the Jews, Paul wrote, I bear record mm. that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Mm -hmm. And in his letter to the Colossians, Paul said of Epaphras, I bear him record, mm -hmm. I bear him record that he hath a great zeal for you, them that are in Laodicea and Hierapolis. Mm -hmm. And John said of the revelation that he wrote, who bear record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and all things that he saw. So what does it mean to bear record? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you're giving your opinion. Amen. Mm -hmm. Bearing record doesn't mean you're giving your view of things. Uh -huh. That's right. mm -hmm. Bearing record is not a statement of philosophy. It's not a statement of the official position of the sect mm -hmm. to which you belong. Bearing record is a factual thing. Amen. More than just a mere human opinion. Mm -hmm. Now those who are privy to Bible discussions, mm -hmm. no doubt you have noted the phenomenal amount of opinion found in such discussions. Mm -hmm. It's actually astounding. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Just, te just test it out. Mm -hmm. Start a Bible discussion with somebody, anybody, mm -hmm. and unless it's quite a different kind of person, uh -huh. you will be inundated with human opinion. That's right. You can hardly find a person that can hold an intelligent discussion about the things of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's not bearing record. Yeah, that's right. See, that when the scripture talks about record, this is talking about here's this isn't saying this is what I think happened when Lazarus was raised from the dead. They're just giving you the facts in the case. Amen. That's all. And this, of course, is the power of testimony. Mm -hmm. Yes. The power of testimony isn't the way you say it mm -hmm. or the inflection of your voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's whether what you're saying is true or not. Amen. Like when you're talking of things in the Lord. The only thing that's served by a voice in human opinion is the advancement of human opinions and 
and sex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're advanced yeah. uh -huh. by non-record type speaking. Yeah. But when it comes to a record hmm. like that provided by John and later Jesus, he'd bear record, and before <laughs> that Moses bear record, mm -hmm. is that faith can take hold yeah. of such reports. Amen. That's right. Which means if you want to in affect, mm -hmm. favorably affect people you talk to, mm -hmm. you've got to speak the truth as it is in Christ Jesus. Yeah, that's right. It's not a matter of you personally swaying them. Uh -huh, yeah. Amen. Amen. That's not how it's done. Uh -huh, you've yeah. got to bear record. Yeah, that's right. And the secret. I understand this sounds simplistic, but I want to say it anyway. Mm -hmm. The secret is only say what you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amen. amen. Yeah. You say, well, I don't know much. Well, maybe it's more than you think. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if you were to count all the things you know, maybe the count might not be as high as you'd like. But what if what the things you know are the central core things? Yeah, yeah. amen. That means you know a whole lot. Uh -huh. yeah. So having said that, let's get into our text right. about John bearing record. Mm -hmm. He's telling you the truth mm. about what happened, the truth before God mm -hmm. with a good conscience. John bear record, mm -hmm. saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. Mm -hmm. My record, I saw that. Think about that. Yeah. That's something to see. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, John doesn't give the actual account mm -hmm. of the Spirit descending on Jesus. He doesn't give the actual account. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they do. They give the actual account. I want to go over that. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what John, John said. I saw it. I, I saw this. Matthew reports Jesus coming to John to be baptized by him, and John at first forbidding him, mm -hmm. saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me. And Matthew records that Jesus said, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him, or permitted him, mm -hmm. permit it to be so now. Mm -hmm. When Jesus was baptized and went up straightway, or immediately out of the water and lo the heavens were open unto him and, and he saw the spirit he this is Jesus he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him this Matthew's report see mm -hmm. and it was then that a voice from heaven said this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased and that's, that's Matthew's account of this John, John didn't give this account. Here's Mark's account. Mark simply says, It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. He then records that straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. That's for a more abbreviated, that's Mark's account. Look, he gives a he gives a very abbreviated account. He says, "Now, when all the people were baptized, I say, when all the people, mm -hmm. after all people, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something the others didn't say. Huh? Jesus being baptized." And praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape mm -hmm. like a dove upon him. And a voice from heaven would say, Thou art my beloved Son, and thee I am well pleased. And then Luke adds, Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. So mm -hmm. there's some, in some of that information there. See, Matthew says that Jesus came from Galilee. 
Mark, he's a little more specific. He says he came from Nazareth in Galilee. Luke and John omit the place from which Jesus came to John. They don't, they don't tell it. Only Matthew records John refusing to baptize Jesus at first. The others don't mention that. Matthew records Jesus saying it's fitting to fulfill all righteousness. Matthew says the heavens were open to him and he saw the Spirit seemed like a dove and lighting upon him. Mark said he saw the heavens open and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. Luke says Jesus was baptized, heavens open, and the Spirit descended in a bodily shape like a dove. John says the Spirit descended like a dove and abode upon him. All of these things harmonize, mm -hmm. but you gotta got you, you got to put it all together. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the way Scripture is written. Mm -hmm. One person says this, one person says that, another person says this, and you got to put it together. All these things happen. Mm -hmm. But see, God has established of old times, got to be more than one witness. Mm -hmm. See, every witness doesn't say the same thing. Uh -huh. They just don't all say the same thing. They talk about the same thing. And it all yeah. fits together. So you got Jesus coming from Nazareth in Galilee to John. Mm -hmm. After everybody else has been baptized. <laughs> you think that Jesus was first, he'd be the first to be up. No, he's after, after. Everybody else is baptized, he's baptized. Except when he come up out of the water, something different happened. Mm -hmm. Heaven was opened. The Holy Spirit descended from heaven in the bodily shape of a dove so you could see him. Yeah, that's right. And, and he lit, he lighted or landed on Jesus and he didn't leave. Mm -hmm. And then he was about 30 years old when that happened. Mm -hmm. David was 30 years old. He began to reign. He was 30. Mm -hmm. Jesus was 30. John the Baptist was 30 when he commenced his ministry. Now, the script Matthew draws his attention to the fact that John Bach, he didn't know this was, a, this was a Messiah, but he did know who it was in the flesh. It was Jesus of Nazareth, and he was, uh, he was a, noted for being very holy, evidently. He said, <laughs> I mean, I've been in the wilderness only with God all this time, but mm -hmm. I, you should be baptized in me. I shouldn't be baptized in you. It's befitting, it's, it's becometh us, the scripture says, it's befitting. Jesus says, this is the right thing to do. That's what he means when he says it becometh us. Jesus said, it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. Now, this is becoming to us to do this. This is fitting for us to do. Mm -hmm. See, I mean, this is the right thing for us to, That's right. for us to do. This is what we must do. This is what we must do. Mm -hmm. It's what we ought to do. Now, this is the kingdom way of thinking. Now, here's how flesh thinks. What can't I do? Yeah. Yeah. It's the way flesh thinks now. And the little yeah. children think. This is exactly how little children think. Yeah. What is it I can't do? The king way of thinking is, what should I do? Mm -hmm. What do you want me to do? Not, not what should what should I avoid doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And for fulfilling righteousness, see this is how righteousness this is how righteousness is fulfilled. Righteousness isn't fulfilled by avoiding doing something; it's yeah. by doing something. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Fulfilling righteousness, doing everything is required. Mm. Some versions read, "Do all that uprightness demands." What is if you want to be upright, mm -hmm. you want to be godly, you want to be right before God's eyes, what do you think you should do? Mm -hmm. This is how you should think. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he tells John, this, yeah. is the, this is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Now this involves character more than action. Yeah, amen. See, we talk about this is what we should do. Mm -hmm. This is talking more about character. Mm -hmm. Like how sensitive is a person? Mm -hmm. If they balk 
and what Jesus says to do, they're not sensitive. Mm -hmm. I mean, they yeah, may amen. cry, you know, yeah, yeah. they may be emotional, mm -hmm. but if they refuse to do what God says to do, yeah, yeah. they're hard-hearted and have callous hearts, amen. and they're not sensitive, no yeah. matter how else they appear. Yeah. Right. Maybe a nice little old lady. Hmm. Yeah. But that, that it's not a nice little old lady hmm. if she refuses to do what Jesus says to do. Yeah. It's a new deal with people. You gotta you gotta pick up on this. Hmm. How sensitive are they to Christ? How sensitive are they? How sensitive are they to God? Mm -hmm. What do, do they ask what 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 does God want me to do? What do, what should I do before God? You really got someone on your hands. When asked the side of questions, that type of questions they ask. When we're tempted to do what's not, what's, when we're tempted to do what's right, and we don't do it, or shall I say if we're moved to do what's right and we don't do it, mm -hmm. that's sin. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's right. a sin. That, that's a sin. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you have this compulsion to... Yeah. Do good. There's that uh -huh. compulsion, but you but you don't carry it out. You sin. That's right. Amen. Well, James put it in words. He uh -huh. said, "To him that knoweth to do good, uh -huh. and doeth it not, yeah. to him it's sin. It's a sin of omission uh -huh. instead yeah. of a sin of commission." That's right. Mm -hmm. See, for one who is dead and whose life is hid with Christ in God, and who's living under Him that mm -hmm. Died for him and rose from the dead. There's no other way to live. All right, I. It's my record. I I saw the Holy Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, uh -huh. and stayed. He didn't yeah. light on Jesus and then fly away. <laughs> he stayed there. But uh, Don said I. I knew him not. That's before this happened. That's right. I knew him not. There was nothing about Jesus' outward appearance that distinguished him from other honest and good people. Mm -hmm. Except if a man is honest and good, you know, there are people who are honest and good. They don't know, but they're honest and good. But there's nothing about Jesus that distinguished him mm -hmm. from in appearance. That's right. From other honest and uh -huh. good yeah. people. The prophet Isaiah said this of him, when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. The NIV reads, he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. There wasn't like a halo, like the Catholic, Catholic art always has a halo around Jesus, wherever you see a picture of Jesus, a halo. All of their art. For hundreds of years, it's a halo around Jesus' mm -hmm. head. Yeah. There wasn't anything like that. That's not what attracted people to Jesus. People that were genuinely attracted to Jesus weren't attracted by his ap appearance. Yeah. They were attracted by his words and his yes. work. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's what drew the people. Not, and I don't think I think Jesus was pro read, probably rather a handsome young man. I can't see him being an ugly person, <laughs> but that's but there are a lot of other people like that were handsome young men. Yeah. That's not what attracted them at all. Now, see, I'm persuaded that this same situation exists today. That people don't know who Jesus is. Hmm. I knew him not. That's what John said. I knew him not. Yeah. Those who oppose Jesus, like the Jewish leaders and princes did so because they knew him not. Mm -hmm. They didn't know who he was. That's right. That's the only reason they did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The people who refuse to believe on Jesus and refuse to follow Jesus, uh -huh. they don't know who he is. Amen. That's, that's why. That's right. This is why. Why do people seek a resolution to their difficulties from other sources? Why? They don't know who Jesus is. That's why they do this. 
Why is the professing church use worldly wise people? Employ them. Why? Because they don't know who Jesus is. Uh -huh. Why do they go to the motivators of the world hmm. to move their people? Hmm. And the financial gurus of the world hmm. to induce their people to give money. Why do they do that? Because they don't know who yeah. Jesus is. Uh -huh. That's why. Why do some people go to the psychiatrist hmm. to resolve their emotional problems? I understand that there's some medic, sometimes some physiological medical things. I'm not talking about that. Uh -huh. Why do they do that? They don't know who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why. See, this the same situation exists today. Mm -hmm. The difference was John wanted to know who he was. But he couldn't tell just by appearance. Or Jesus just to walk in this room immediately, uh -huh. you couldn't tell who he was yeah. mm -hmm. until he spoke. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or until he worked. Yeah. <laughs> then, then he would distinguish himself. I didn't know who he was, John said. I, did, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. But the, the one that sent me, the one, the one that sent me. <laughs> what a thought. Yeah. John knew who sent him. Mm -hmm. Amen. How did he know who sent him? Mm -hmm. Well, I think there's at least at least two reasons why he knew who sent him. First, his parents Zacharias and Elizabeth they they knew, uh -huh. yeah. and they raised him as a, after the strict vows of the Nazarite. Mm -hmm. they, they had to tell him sometime along the line. <laughs> Why he couldn't eat grapes, he couldn't drink strong drink and all this, <laughs> couldn't cut his hair. He, he had to tell him to come that way. Mm -hmm. And secondly, when he's in the wilderness, the word of the Lord came to him. Yeah. Out there in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. He knew that, he knew by that, by that. So he had this twofold testimony. Uh -huh. His parents knew what, what John, who John was. He was one to prepare the way of the Lord. And they told him. And then he, the word of the Lord came to John, and John elaborated, uh, Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, the Father, elaborated mm -hmm. on that. See, the word of God says in Luke 3, 2, Annas and Caiaphas, being the high priests, the word of God came unto John. The son of Zacharias in the wilderness. Now notice carefully. <laughs> normally the word came to the high priest. Normally uh -huh. the, the direction was through the high priest. Yeah. Normally. Uh -huh. But Annas and Caiaphas being the high priest, the word of the Lord came not to them. <laughs> yeah. Came to John. Yeah. John the Baptist. So he's now going to tell you some of the things that, uh -huh. that were told him. Yeah. He said, uh, he that sent me to baptize with water, mm -hmm. that's the agent I used. I baptized with, with water. Mm -hmm. See, it doesn't make a lot of sense to see I immersed with water. <laughs> see that? Yeah, yeah, that's right. You immerse in water. Mm -hmm. And it, he did baptize him in water, too. I understand that. But with water, because he's going to make a point here. Uh-huh. He that sent me baptized with water said, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. Mm -hmm. that, that's the one. You've got to pay attention to that one. Mm -hmm. So whoever you baptize, you've got to keep your eyes open. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You don't baptize this and look down the road and see who's next. You've know, you got to know what happens. That's right. John had to know what happened yeah. when he baptized the Messiah. Uh -huh. Something was going to happen that that's didn't right. happen to the other people. Matthew says uh, the Spirit of God descended like a dove in lighting, mm -hmm. landing upon him. Mm -hmm. Mark records the same. He saw heavens open, the Spirit like a dove descended. He saw just, mm -hmm. it was just flying down, so to speak. Mm -hmm. The beholder in both texts was, was Jesus himself. Jesus is the one who saw the that doesn't mean John didn't 
see him, but it's interesting that Jesus did see him. And when the heavens are open, both Matthew and Mark says he said, Thou art my beloved son. Not in some way we gather this was said to the multitude, no too, but he said this was for Jesus' sake, this was done. Jesus began his ministry mm-hmm. with a heavenly confirmation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Thou art my mm-hmm. beloved son. Luke says that the Spirit descended in a bodily shape. That is so you could see it, so you could see. You couldn't see the Spirit descending unless it had some kind of a, he took on some kind of a bodily shape. Now, Satan took on the form of a serpent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Spirit took on the form of a dove. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, it was a clean bird. Amen. Say it again. Yes. That's right. Amen. We can see that it, it's it's a person of the Godhead that actually comes to us. Amen. And abides with us. Versus a power or an influence. Yes, a person. That's right. Mm-hmm. This is a person that could not be detected by the human eye. So, that, so in order that you'd know what was happening, the Holy Spirit took the form of a dove and came down, landed on Jesus, and stayed there. Mm-hmm. Now, John, this John gives continues his testimony. He said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending remaining on him, the same is he that baptizes with the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Other verses read, Baptizes with the Holy Spirit, baptizes in the Holy Spirit. Gives baptism with the Holy Spirit, immerses in the Holy Spirit. It's interesting that this is said, this John says this, isn't it? Because mm-hmm. I come from a background where it's taught that the, only the apostles were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Hmm? It's a strong yeah. teaching. Yeah. I was taught this very strongly. Uh-huh. But here's John. And this is a public statement. Uh-huh. This is a public statement that he's telling the people before Jesus is baptized. He's going to baptize with the Spirit. Did he? Could it be that he's saying he's going to baptize twelve people with this? Oh. Is this what he's saying? No. No, he's distinguishing. Je- uh-huh. John was a baptizer. Yeah, that's right. But Jesus is a baptizer too. Yeah. Amen. John baptized with water. Yeah. He shall baptize with the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. All the writers draw attention to this statement. Mm-hmm. The baptism Jesus performs is distinct from John's baptism. Amen. John's baptism was in water mm-hmm. unto repentance yeah. for the remission of sin. Yeah. John says to the people, he shall baptize you uh-huh. to the audience. Now some say that you will know, baptize, baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Some say that with fire means with unquenchable fire. That's talking about the chaff. Which I'm going to just I'm just I'm going to disagree. I'm going on record. I'm disagreeing with that yeah, assessment, uh-huh. even though I once said uh-huh. that myself. Uh-huh. This is not saying he's going to baptize some uh-huh. with the Holy Spirit and others with fire. Uh-huh. That's, yeah, yeah. 
That's not what he's saying. See, you should figure it out because baptized uh -huh. with the Holy Spirit is at the commencement yeah. uh -huh. of newness of life. Baptizing with unquenchable fire, yeah. that, that's at the conclusion of everything. So this uh -huh. can't <laughs> this can't be what he's talking about. That's right. He's speaking about the same thing that the prophets talked about. It's, uh -huh. it's another view of cleansing and washing. Amen. That's right. Isaiah 4.4 4 says, speaks of the washing and purging that was accomplished by the spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning. Mm -hmm. That is, it's, re it's a refiner's fire, yeah. not unquenchable. Amen. Fire. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. He'll baptize you with this. He'll wash you and cleanse That's you. That's right. With the Holy Spirit, uh -huh. and by burning out, that's right. It would be an advantage. It would be an advantage to the person. That's right. It would actually have a presence right. with them now that would actually <laughs> assist them that's right. in doing it. Yeah. Now that's easy for me to see now, but I had to go through a lot of stuff to see that. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this was confirmed at the house of Cornelius. Mm -hmm. the According to Peter, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the Gentiles. Amen. In the same manner, it was poured out on the apostles uh -huh. and disciples uh, at the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. In the same way. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. They yeah. received the Holy Spirit like we did. Like we did. And the Ephesian disciples, they, same thing happened again. Now, the difficulty comes in this speaking, they spoke with tongues. Uh -huh. In Pentecost, they spoke with tongues. Uh -huh. They were understood. Mm -hmm. House of Cornelius, they spoke with tongues that was understood by Peter, mm -hmm. and they were with him. And that the, the Ephesian disciples, they spoke with tongues, and that was understood because they prophesied. They understood something understood. Mm -hmm. But see, all these three instances, the baptism with the Spirit wasn't the thing that was unique. It's the speaking with tongues that was unique. Mm -hmm. Because it attested to something. The day of Pentecost, when they spoke with other tongues, this said, this is the beginning of the day of salvation. Uh -huh, uh -huh. At the house of Cornelius, they spoke with other tongues. This confirmed to Peter the Gentiles had been accepted. Yeah, See, this was uh -huh. these were epochs. That's right. And at the, bab the Ephesian disciples, this was the official end of John's baptism at that time. So they spoke with tongues. That was a sign. This, is, this terminates John's baptism, which is never mentioned after that. Yeah. But the baptism itself in the Holy Spirit was not unique. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's the baptism Jesus baptizes yeah, amen. with. All right, now we're told, walk in the Spirit. Uh -huh. How did you get in the Spirit? Mm. You were baptized into the yeah, Spirit. Yeah, amen. That's right. Yeah. That's how you got in the first place. Well, uh -huh. oh, you've got to see that. Yeah. You're in the Spirit because Jesus baptized you with the Spirit mm -hmm. or into the Spirit. Mm -hmm. He put you in mm -hmm. put you in there. I dealt with this yeah. extensively and went through the book of Acts. I didn't I didn't want to deal extensively with it again, but if mm -hmm. necessary I would. Yeah. This is the one who's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. See this this couldn't be of just the commencement of Christ's ministry when he when he Baptized the apostles. This mm -hmm. such a statement as this could not possibly just apply to that period of time. Uh -huh. the, the God is telling him Jesus is going to baptize differently than you do. Yeah. Uh -huh. You do it with water. Uh -huh. That doesn't mean God obviated being baptized yeah. with water. Uh -huh. But Jesus doesn't baptize with water. Uh -huh. yeah. He baptizes with the Spirit. Amen. And men can't do that. That's right. Amen. To make a point of that, the Bible does make a point that Jesus did not baptize anybody with water. That's right. His disciples baptized. That's right. Yeah. So this was distinguishing the ministry of the Messiah, yeah, not, not the start of his ministry, uh -huh. but his ministry. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so John says, "I saw now, and I bear record. I'm telling you the truth, that this is mm -hmm. the Son of God." Yeah. Now, this is especially important because this is not the type of thing that the Elijah of Malachi's prophecy is going to do. Uh -huh. 
His ministry was not to establish that Jesus was the Son of God. His ministry was to unite the people. Uh -huh. yeah. hmm. What John is going to say he saw is the heavenly attestation that Jesus of Nazareth was the Son of God. Hmm. In this case, saw, uh -huh. that word saw includes perceived, discerned, comprehended. Mm -hmm. It's just not a a visual sight. It's, he knew what was happening <coughs> and what happened. See, of old time, Joseph's brothers saw him, but they didn't know who it was. Mm -hmm. See? I bear record. I, I'm giving my witness now. That I'm giving my witness. This is the Son of God. All right, now let's look at that, this phrase, the Son of God. The phrase, the Son of God, with Son in uppercase letters, occurs one time from Genesis to Malachi. And it's in Daniel 3.25, and it's not talking about Jesus. It's talking about an angel, which is spelled out. In fact, the only time the phrase is ever used in any sense, that's the only time the phrase is used in any sense, until Matthew 4, 3. Mm. The Son, I'm talking about the Son mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. From, Malachi, mm -hmm. from Malachi, Genesis through Malachi, yeah. the New American Standard, New International Version, New Revised Standard Version, doesn't even mention it. Mm. But the lowercase says. Other versions translate this Daniel 3 as a God, son of the gods, one of the gods. In the Living Translation, it looks like God. This was the statement of one of Nebuchadnezzar's counselors. Uh -huh. yeah. And what he was saying was, this is some kind of deity. Uh -huh. That's what he was uh -huh. saying. What was uh -huh. it talking about? Jesus. Now the phrase is my son uh -huh. and the son are used prophetically of the Messiah. Uh -huh. I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. Psalm 2 7. Uh -huh. Kiss the son. Yeah. Alright, that's talking about the Messiah uh -huh. prophetically. Psalm 2 12. He's also referred to as a son. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Notice he does not say the son of God. Yeah, uh -huh. The term son is there. And again, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Uh -huh. Daniel also saw one like the son of man. Uh -huh. Daniel 7, 13. My point is this. You had to have understanding yeah. from heaven. Uh -huh. to call Jesus the Son of God. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Once you see this, uh -huh. you can see this in these other texts, yeah, but right. it was like veiled. Uh -huh. This was not how he was referred to, the Son of uh -huh. God. The prophet uh -huh. didn't refer to him as the Son of God. Right. John did. He saw it. Then once seen, yeah. my son, you, know, yeah. well, then you look back, you kiss the Son. Uh -huh. Unto us the son is given. Then you can put it all together. Uh -huh. They couldn't put it together. We know this because the people who were experts in scripture, this was the very point they condemned Jesus That's on. Right. They said yep. He said he was the son of God. Uh -huh. The fact that he said, I am the son of God, that's the point on which they condemned him. Yeah. Even though the whole those scriptures, now that you know this truth, mm -hmm. you can see it. They couldn't see it. That's right. It was veiled back then. Mm -hmm. This is not the primary way Jesus was revealed by the prophets mm -hmm. as the Son of God. So this was, this is the revolutionary thing. Yeah, amen. When he saw this, mm -hmm. the very first word about Christ was spoken by God Himself, mm -hmm. and He referred to Him as the seed of the woman. Mm -hmm. Then a little later. He was a seed of Abraham. These were how he was primarily known. And then he was also known as the son of David. 
you depart, but the, the Son of God. God reserved that clear, concise declaration for himself. Mm -hmm. yeah. When Jesus was baptized, God himself said, This yeah. is my beloved Son, mm -hmm. in whom I am well pleased. Yeah. Until that time, this thing was veiled. Yeah. Men could not see it. Yeah. John saw it. says, I'm given my record that this is the record that... This is the Son of God, yeah. Amen. which right. is the his preeminent mm -hmm. identity. Yeah. Amen. Friend is not his preeminent identity. That's right. Intercessor is not his preeminent uh -huh. identity. His preeminent identity mm -hmm. is Son of God. This is what the centurion saw when Jesus died. He said, surely this is the Son of God. Yeah, uh-huh. That's what he saw. He'll be unique. This is, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. This is what John Paul preached. Yeah. He convinced them that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. Uh-huh. That's his preeminent identity. Mm -hmm. the, God dwells in the person that confesses this. Yeah, Whoever believes Jesus is the Son of yeah. God dwells in God, and God yeah. dwells in him. See, right. This is the preeminent. Amen. It's not his relationship to you uh -huh. that is preeminent, but his relationship to God yeah. that's Amen. preeminent. That's right. Well, we've got a Jesus being preached today. Hmm. His preeminent identity is with men. Uh-huh. Yes. Not yeah. with God. Whoever believes this overcomes the world. Does that yeah. make a difference who it is? Whoever uh -huh. believes Jesus is the Son of God overcomes the world. Yes. That's the statement Amen. of Scripture. Yeah. So whoever doesn't overcome the world doesn't believe this. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Which means this thing is deeper uh -huh. than, an, than an academic statement. Uh -huh. yeah. This is the fact Satan himself challenged. Uh -huh. Two times he yeah. said, if Thou be the Son of God. See, uh -huh. that's, that's the thing he challenged. Yeah. Uh -huh. The perception of this unites believers. That we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge mm -hmm. of the Son of God. See, that one people can see him as the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Whatever his relationship is to me, however he blesses me, mm. whatever he guides and directs me in, he is preeminently mm -hmm. the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Take that out of the equation, yeah. and Jesus means zero yeah. to yeah. us. That's right. Amen. Uh -huh. The Son of God means Jesus is the principal spokesman and worker for God. Amen. Yeah. Not the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Jesus. Yes. It means that all of God's fullness dwells in Jesus. That if uh -huh. anything God has... Any trait God possesses, mm -hmm. any benefit God gives that is to be transmitted to men has to come through Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. He's the firstborn of many, many brethren. He's the only one that can bring us to God. Amen. But we can't come just on or just come on our uh -huh. own accord. Uh -huh. So I, John said, I bear record now this is the truth. Mm -hmm. Your faith can get a hold of this. Remember, the record means your faith can. Mm -hmm. This is the Son of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have Jesus, mm -hmm. you've got it all. Amen. 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 That's right. Everything that men can have from God mm -hmm. is possessed in Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, me, each of you. <coughs> See who Jesus is now and keep your grasp of who that is. Mm -hmm. Keep your grasp of who Jesus is. Satan mm -hmm. will try and turn your attention to other things. Try to turn your attention to you. Mm -hmm. Said the most important thing is for you to know whether you or not you are a son of God. Uh -huh. That's necessary to know, but that's on the, that's second. Mm -hmm. That's second on the agenda. Yeah. The first is he's God's son. That's the uh -huh. first thing to see. Then the rest. In his light, you'll see light. Mm -hmm. Well, to, to me, this is, a, <laughs> this is a very provocative text. I really enjoyed it, but I, mm -hmm. I sense that a lot more could be said about it. 
And I think I'll conclude that. Yeah. Any of you have something you'd like to add tonight? Brother, I have a, I have a question. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to ask it. It kind of bothers me. But it had never occurred to me before. It may have occurred to others before. The, uh, the Spirit descending upon Jesus. Yeah. We understand that he didn't have the spirit until that time. And remaining. Yes. Yeah, not in that sense. Yes. I mean, it's unthinkable to imagine that the Son of God abode on the earth for 30 years without God's spirit. No, I didn't say it was without God's spirit. Yeah. That's, well, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. unthinkable to think that, as yeah. far as I'm concerned. But he, could, he didn't have enough to save somebody. You know, there are some who think that he actually became God's son at that moment. He wasn't God's son before. No, he was born. The sonship was associated with his birth. I know. Yeah. Uh, there are some who think that. I know. Yeah, it is a profound thing. It isn't that he was without the Spirit any more than no. any more than John the Baptist was There's, without the Spirit. Yeah, he was uh, full of the Spirit too, but yeah. not in this not well, not in this point. sense. That's in other point. words, yeah. it was it was the the spirit remained on him to to engage and complete the work he'd been given yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. did not mean it was without the spirit, right? Because even John was the Zacharias said Elizabeth <laughs> without the spirit. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. But yeah, right. Well, the spirit came on Mary. That's what came and on brought Mary. Brought Jesus to her. That's right. To her womb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, Sister Barb. About how John had been cultured to be able to receive such a great revelation at this certain time. That first of all, he didn't know who Jesus was, mm -hmm. the Messiah. That was revealed to him when he saw the yeah. dove descending upon him. That was the first part of this revelation. But then it was even opened up farther when the Lord spoke. When That's God right. spoke from heaven, This is my son. Mm -hmm. That's right. So that was the, the revelation of who Christ was. was a large revelation that he hadn't had before. Mm -hmm. But right on the heels of that, this is God's son. Mm -hmm. Something, I, and I never made the connection that this had not been revealed in yeah. that way before. That's right. Mm -hmm. But John was cultured in such a way that he was very able yeah. to quickly take hold of that revelation, that great amount of revelation, um, and handle it rightly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amen. Whenever John said that Jesus was the Son of God, Jesus could have told him what he told Peter. Blessed art thou, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but yeah. my Father which is in heaven. Yeah. Amen. amen. Yeah, amen. Yes, Larry. Good. Yeah. That's good, Ray. Mm -hmm. That's good. You, everybody can see that, can't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Academics uh, are a robber. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. They take more from you than they give you. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. And you can look at all these things about Christ academically, and it mm -hmm. seems like you think you know it and all this, mm -hmm. you know, but. The, the, when it gets down, when it gets down to tapping into the power, you know, then mm. you find out. Yeah. <laughs> then you find out what you know and what you don't know. Yeah. And yeah, this Amen. is the thing you talked about bearing record. Yeah, this is the main point of this text: is that That's John's right. saying, "I, I witnessed it. I That's saw right. this." That's right. And and what he was told, he said, "You'll see the spirit descending." He didn't. He didn't here it doesn't say he was told you'll see a dove descend. That's right. So see, he was he was watching he had to see up. that. That's he, right. He, he was he, he he saw what happened and, <laughs> and 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 he this was the fulfillment of what I was told. But he had to put that together. See, the dove, as I understand, is a very sensitive bird. Like you know, you don't like tame doves, so mm -hmm. to speak. So the dove descended and then landed on him and stayed on him. But yeah. he knew this this is an ordinary That's dove. Right. He had to put that together. That's right. Amen. Brother, are we, to, are we perhaps to understand that the dove somehow joined itself to Jesus? 
I don't know. The body of the dove? I don't know. Because it really? remained on him. He remained on him. I don't know how long it did. I mean, obviously, he didn't go around with a dove on his shoulder. I don't think so. No. <laughs> Maybe the dove showed up and went, you know. But anyway, I got that immediately there. In other words, yeah. he wasn't frightened off. Yeah. I mean, this is this is not like a loan. This is a this is a man uh -huh. in water, which is not the place doves mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. And there's a crowd around there, and it, so this for him to for the dove to land on Jesus and abide there for any time would I would think uh -huh. it have been a, like a phenomenon. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't, got I don't think he walked around with the dove on him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The dove found a resting place. You remember the old right. dove sent out in the dove. He didn't yes, find yes, a resting place, so he right. come back. But he found a resting place, uh -huh. he didn't come back again. Amen. I was going to say, like, uh, kind of similar to what you just said. Mm -hmm. um, it, like, the, the dove landing on Christ was like the dove landing on a tree, like, after Noah released it from the flood. Said, "Give life here." That's know? right. And mm -hmm. That's right. And once Jesus came out of the the, 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 the water, you know, the dove landed on him. Like mm -hmm. there, this is life in this man. This is where, you know, the beginning yeah. is. Man, man, I thought he landed on John because John was the one baptized. <laughs> so you think he landed on John? He landed on Jesus. That's right. Which was a sign. That was a sign. How would how would John have known he had the spirit that the spirit? Yeah. Came on him. Yeah. I was thinking too, and it's like in the beginning when you showed how the different ones uh, told their account. That's the way the Lord still teaches us right yeah, now. Right. I mean, we're reading these accounts mm -hmm. of what they did, and then we're doing the same thing. Yeah. We're each giving what we see, and that's right. So yeah. we get a clearer picture. So He still teaches the body the same way. Yeah. And then see, if you have if division exists. In division, you don't put the things together. But when they're united, when we're united, the different you're able to put together the yeah. different things that they uh, yeah. are saying. Yeah. Amen. You, you, you strange yeah. you're, on, you're on the fly. That's it's right. It's on the fly. That's you're thinking right. this person witnesses that person. You put it together. Yeah. Amen. Father, we thank you for this record. <clears throat> we thank you for John the Baptist. What a blessing he is. We thank you for his faithful witness and that he kept the faith to the end. Yeah. Help us, Father, to be of the same caliber. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.